often I'm asked, uh, you know, you're a behavior analyst. How can you provide leadership to a company? What is shocking to me day in, day out is that uh, the applied behavior analysis and the science of behavior analysis is doesn't permeate through the fabric of schools and organizations. And we're so good at it on a micro level to be able to provide good behavior analytic scientific principles with kids and with adults. And um, it's still not considered mainstream in schools. Just saw a drug deal go down here on the corner in Philly makes it hard for me to understand no matter how great our behavior intervention plans are and our curriculum design when they leave the school building there's some really tough influences here employees are the most valuable asset when it comes to your delivery of a service if you inappropriately and unethically handle one person in the wrong way you lose hundreds and hundreds of hours of loving care and uh, expertise. Just because you might make an hourly rate of $23 per hour or $43 per hour or $15 an hour, that may not be really what you're producing in the long run for you and your family. And if I started, I, I just did a little formula in my head. I started adding up the revenue that we get from one funding source. And I divided up by all the number of hours that they work throughout uh, a one year period and 52 weeks and 26 payrolls. And I came down to a number that their time is worth two thousand more. Brian, did you know that <laughs> your time is worth? He's like, that's right. Why am I not getting paid that? <laughs> number one is pairing. That's so important. Pairing is so important to what I do, right? And it works because Oprah uses it, right? We want to pair ourselves with fun things. Uh, you know, in order to get better uh, stimulus control and just establish that relationship. We should be doing that with people. Uh, we know the kids really well. We do preference assessments, right? We understand what they're motivated by. But unfortunately, we don't know what our staff are motivated by. social mostly with the staff that are around us she's very friendly she she likes to eat pizza so we're probably gonna end up getting a slice of pizza while we bowl and we want to treat individuals with developmental disabilities with dignity. We want them to be treated first rate, first class. There's nothing wrong with the yellow school bus, but there's stigmas with it. And the van with the big number 18 on the back, our goal is to get away from that and, and not only that, but provide a safe environment. So go back and think about the reason that you do what you do, and it gives you that energy. And for us, it just goes back to one moment when a parent, a parent came to the Sky Zone and introduced herself to me and she said, my child who Myself and my child have always been like treated as the black sheep in our neighborhood. She said, for the first time ever, Mr. Steve pulled up and um, it was really cool the way she said it. I, I almost started to cry. She, she, she said that Mr. Steve pulled up and opened the door for her and her son and all the neighbors that are really nasty to her were just looking at her and she was like, mm-hmm. That's what she did. <laughs> she told me this story and she felt dignity. What produces excellence in any of us is us trying to beat our previous performance individually as a person. As soon as you start looking at what the other guy's doing, bottom line is that you're worried about what they're doing. Uh, you're not focused on your own performance. F focus on your own performance. Steve Jobs, I think, uh, there's things I respected about him, things I didn't. But one of the things that, that he said that resonated with me is that if today were the last day of my life, what I want to do, what I'm about to do today, was a question he would ask himself regularly. And he said, if the answer is no, for too many days in a row, 
something has to change. And I've been in that situation before where the answer was no too many times and I was operating under contingencies of negative reinforcement. Going to the job, not having creativity, not having a niche, not having one thing I'm interested in and getting a sick feeling in my stomach where I knew I wasn't giving it my best and somehow indirectly because I wasn't excited every day that the kids were uh, affected. It's all about two people making small promises to each other. So in other words, I promise something to Raphael, I follow through, and, it, and it's like a thread that starts to build stronger. That thread gets like a giant rope with an anchor and to the point where it's almost impossible to break, which is pretty cool because it's a concrete way of thinking of relationships, trust, and just overall integrity in any business or personal relationship. You make a promise, you deliver, and you build another thread in that rope.